Good afternoon and welcome to the webinar for the Higher Education Capital Matching Grant HECAP program for competitive round six. The key dates are below that were in the RGA that was issued on December 15th, 2023. The applications for a competitive round six are due by March 22nd, 2024, with awards expected not earlier than May 24th, 2024. The opportunity posting can be found in the Grants Reform Gateway Portal, as well as on the DASNY website. We're going to go over the application um, process. This information is, can be found in the RGA Request for Grant Applications that is found on the DASNY website and the Grants Reform Gateway Portal. Your tab one is your application. The standard application form can be found on the DASNY website. All questions reviewed and responded to, including whether the HECAP project has received all necessary regulatory approvals and can demonstrate a reasonable expectation that the approvals will be secured in sufficient time to complete the HECAP project within the eligible project dates. Please be sure that all applicable information and documentation that is outlined in the application is provided. And be sure that everything is signed by an individual authorized to bind the institution contractual, contractually. Please also be sure that the institution maintains pre-qualification in the statewide financial system. This previously was done in the Grants Reform Gateway Portal, but as of January 16th, 2024, pre-qualification is now completed inside of SFS, the statewide financial system. You can uh, go to the SFS website or contact the SFS help desk for any questions regarding uh, pre-qualification status. The institution must maintain pre-qualification throughout the entire process, including all the way through payment by the state comptroller. So be sure that you're checking your uh, document vault and that you've maintained that status um, the whole entire process. Tab 2, Eligible Project. Each institution should provide a robust project description and narrative. The narrative should state the goals that are expected to be achieved as a result of the project, confirm the time frame, and state how the proposed project would accomplish one or more of the following objectives that are outlined in the RGA. There is no word um, count for this, it's just however many words or pages that the institution feels um, they can provide this information to DASNY um, for scoring. Tab three is the financial review. Um, the HECAP program has a three to one match requirement. Three to one match is on the project as a whole and not each task listed in the use of funds column. The HECAP grant amount requested to be utilized for capital costs only. Um, any costs that are not capital can be included in the non-state matching fund portion or the, the institution's matching fund portion, but they cannot be uh, paid for with the HECAP grant funding. The sources and uses of funds and funds necessary at each stage of project completion are also required in this tab. Tab four is the estimate. Provide a professional estimate describing the HECAP project to be funded with the HECAP grant and setting forth the cost to complete such project. Um, the estimate can be completed by an architect or engineer, an experienced facility person at the institution itself, or any contract or vendors that the institution has solicited and or gone out to bid for uh, for this project. A formal bid is not required at the time of application, but um, if one has been obtained at this point, it can be submitted or just a rough estimate um, of the project at this stage. Tab five is funding sources. The institution must provide a detailed description of the type of matching funds to be utilized to complete the HECAP project. 
Um, ways to show funding sources include, but aren't limited to, a bank account or investment account statements that show that the funds are available to complete the project uh, and contain the college's matching portion. Donor pledges, agreements, and receipts. Grant award letters, agreements, and contracts. Loan agreements, commitment letters, bond documents, personal service contracts, bills of sale, um, items of that nature. Um, if the institution using funds for any part of the non-state match, the most recent audited financial statements should be provided with the application. Please be sure that any donor pledges or grant contracts are actually received. If it's a pledge for a future date um, past the date of application and the funds have not been received, those would not be counted as um, completed uh, showing of committed funding for the project. Construction contracts. Um, this is very important and something that we've been working on over the years with the Attorney General's office. Um, it is required that if the institution is doing a HECAP project related to construction, that the Appendix B, the standard clauses for the HECAP program, are incorporated into the construction contract. Um, they would either have to be incorporated by reference into the contract, or if the contract has already been signed and agreed upon, it would need to be amended by reference as um, an amendment to the original contract. It is very important um, that this is completed. It can cause delays at the end of the process when DASNY has to send the contracts for approval as to form by the Attorney General's office. Um, if you have any questions on this after award, we recommend that um, you reach out to DASNY. Um, the, the construction contracts themselves are not required at the time of scoring. They can come after, but uh, if you do have them at the time of scoring, the Appendix B should be amended or incorporated into that contract. Um, the contractor is also required to register through the vendor rep system and complete a vendor responsibility questionnaire. This is a, a requirement of both the college and its uh, vendors and contractors. Um, the contractor should be sure that they are maintaining uh, their VRQ throughout the entire process as well, and they may be asked to recertify. So please be sure that you're conveying this to your contractors and vendors um, if that you are utilizing for a state funded project. This is just the Appendix B that um, is out on the DASNY website that needs to be incorporated and, and or amended into the construction contracts if the institution is seeking a um, construction related project for their HECAP award. Now I'm going to turn it over to Sean Rosny, and he's going to um, outline the MWB documents uh, for the program. Hi, everybody. So we're going to talk about the um, MWB Eagles, uh, which was a 30% MWB goal broken down as 18% and 12%. And this is for any grant award in excess of 25,000 for commodities and services and $100,000 for construction. So we're gonna talk, look at the forms for this next. It's the utilization plan and the request for waiver. On the utilization plan, you're going to fill out your grantee, grantee information. information. This is, is the, the college's, college's information, information, not the contractor's, contractor's information. information. The project information, which would be your ID, the amount of the project, the amount of the grant, and then the goal percentages. The goal percentages and the amounts should be based off of the grant amount not the project amount. You can see the example here. 
And we'll take a look at the next page, which is where you're going to list all of the vendors that you're using. The value of the proposed award is important because that is how we get our goal amounts and meet those goal amount. If you're unable to provide us with a value of the proposed award, then we would ask that you remove that vendor from, from the, the utilization, utilization plan. plan. Additionally, we would ask that you double check with your vendors that they are certified, certified by, by New, New York, York State, State, not just New York City. You can check this at the um, website listed here. And we encourage you to do that once your vendors provide you with who they are using as their subs. Again, New York City registered MWBE firms are not accepted for this. They need to be registered with New York State. Next, we'll look at the waiver. If for some reason you are unable to meet either the 18% or the 12% goals, goals for each, each of the uh, business enterprises, then you would need to fill out a waiver form. Even though you may be over 30% in total, we would still require that a waiver be filled out if you do not reach the 18% or the 12% of MBE or WBE, um, respectively. If you are requesting a total waiver, you're going to select the total waiver percent, uh, total waiver button there. If you are requesting a partial waiver, we need to know the percentage of the waiver that you are requesting. This is for each, the MBE and the WBE. You can see the example there. With the waiver, we need a statement of justification, which will explain what you did to try to reach out to these vendors and what happened that you weren't able to engage enough participation from the MBE or the WBE vendors. Along, Along with that, that statement, statement, we need, we need to, see to see evidence of, of good faith efforts. efforts. You can find information of what constitutes, constitutes good faith efforts below. So you, you want to visit, visit the ESD website, website that, that I talked about and search your contractors on the directory. You'll show us the solicitations that you made to the New York State certified MBEs and WBEs. Give us evidence of what happened with those solicitations. Did they not respond? Were those solicitations were those bids? way over what you were anticipating and they wouldn't have worked for your budget. We would also expect to see published advertisements um, and steps to reasonably structure the contract for working with these vendors. We talked about some of the sample documentation that I talked about. Um, Evidence of those bids, the whether they respond or not. Why you chose to either go with them or go with a different vendor. More documentation samples here. If your organization has not yet completed the specifications or the bid or bid the contract. Uh, we want you to reach out. We want you to explain the situation to us. 
Um, you want to assess their availability, interest, capability, complete the utilization plan, and provide a signed letter and documentation stating that you contacted these firms, firms and, that and that they have, they have expressed, expressed interest, interest in bidding. bidding. Once you have actually engaged those, those vendors, vendors, at, at that, that point, point, you'll submit a revised utilization plan with updated numbers. These here are examples of the determination letters for the total waiver and the acceptance letter of the utilization plan. This here is the compliance report. When you receive approval for your utilization plan or your waiver form, you'll also receive a copy of this compliance report. This is what you will fill out when requesting reimbursement to show that this is who you engaged. This is, you know, This is the amount, and this is how we fulfilled our goal. Any questions, please reach out to us at the email address on the screen. Should you have any questions or concerns about this, the best, the best thing, thing to do, do is, is to contact, contact us early once you have been awarded the grants. Thank you for attending the webinar today. Um, if you have any questions that may not have been addressed, we um, ask you to check the DASNY website and look at the frequently asked questions out on the site, um, as well as the Q&As that were um, collected and answered from this uh, question and answer period for competitive round six. Um, if you have something that was not answered, um, during the webinar or these questions and answers, you can email that email address, HECAP RFP coordinator at DASNY.org. Um, we will review your question um, and if we can answer it, um, we will try to the best of our ability or we will make the answer available to all entities um, out on the DASNY website since this is an open procurement period. We thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Deanne DePace um, and Sean Rosny, and uh, we look forward to receiving your applications um, March 22nd, 2024. Thank you.